Hello, Booktube. I'm back with another forgotten poet. This time, uh, it's a poet that was at his height um, during the 1920s. He wrote poetry, novels, biographies, but um, his day job was working for uh, as a, well as a civil servant, uh, Board of Trade, and then the Ministry of Labor. He lived from January 5th, 1885 to January 5th, 1940. And yeah, he's definitely forgotten today. Uh, I've had to look him up in, in uh, sort of, you know, on the internet uh, to get a few dates. And there is a Wikipedia page because he was so big at the time. And there's a listing of a couple dozen books that he's written. And he was born in, as I say, January 5th, 1885 in Milan, uh, the Kingdom of Italy, as it was known at the time. And his father was German and his mother was Italian, but he was brought up in, in uh, Bradford, uh, the West Riding of Yorkshire. And he went to Wadham, I think it was Wadham College, College uh, Oxford. And um, his first published book uh, was um, in 1920 called London Sonnets. Uh, but his best known, apparently, according to Wikipedia, is called The Uncelestial City. That was 1930. Now, I'm familiar with that title, but I, I think that's been used a lot. So I don't, rec I don't connect a Humbert, well, his name is Humbert Wolfe. Uh, with with uh, that title. And apparently his sort of only sort of known um, little poem that's sort of requoted today is called Epigram, British Journalist. It's short four lines. You cannot hope to bribe or twist, thank God, the British journalist. But seeing that what the man will do unbribed, there's no occasion to. And just another quick look through um, the internet, and I did a search, and back in 2012, The Guardian had an article. Uh, Carol Rumens has been doing, um, basically every week, it's uh, Poem of the Week. And so she highlights um, Humbert Wolf's Denmark poem, which she quotes at the, at the bottom. I'm not going to read it, uh, but I will leave a link to the article. And she starts out with a prolific novelist, translator, and poet at the height of his popularity in the UK during the 1920s. Today, Humber Wolf is, Humbert Wolf is more or less forgotten. The one poem still quoted uh, is that nicely prophetic and scathing epigram of which I just I just quoted. Now, going back to uh, the Wikipedia article lists, as I said, a couple dozen um, titles. And the first one, as I say, was London Sonnets, 1920. But the fourth title was Circular Saws, 1923. And I go, hmm. And I went, hmm, because uh, yesterday... Mark at uh, Book Time with Elvis read a little essay uh, about historians. And there was a great line in there, I thought. It was like, you know, he had a voice like a circular saw. And it's just like it really jumped out for me. And, and and we talked a little bit about this. And it was like, yeah, well, like, you know, it is an odd, an odd saying. And like, where would it come about? You know, like it's, 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 it's like, it's almost hyperbole in a sense. It's over the top, but it's just like, you know, would it have been thought that way at the time where circular saw is more in, you know, fashion or to use in, in the vernacular in, in sort of common speech that's a rabbit hole that you can get lost down. But I just thought this one popped up. So I, and there's a link. It, it can be available on, or it is available to download a PDF or EPUB off of the archive.org. And 
I, I, I have done that, and I've looked at it a bit, and I'm not 100% sure what it is. It's like little snippets, like little vignettes of conversations on certain topics that are sort of flights of fantasy in, in some ways. And I don't mean fantasy in the sense of uh, Tolkien. I just mean, you know, it's it's like not real uh, little things. Like, I think there's, I, I, I scanned through and I saw something like a, like a pin, you know, like a hat pin or something like that talking. So it's a bit, it's a bit odd. And I thought, well, I wonder, I wonder how much something like that is now. He's a forgotten author, you know. And so I went on um, a uh, book search engine uh, for, for booksellers. And three or four come up, uh, you know, print on demand, um, you know, junk. Uh, but there's one that's in really rough shape that's cheap, but it's ex-library and it looks like it's almost fallen apart. Then there's one at the other end, which is over 660 pounds. That, ooh, that's a little pricey, but it, it has a dust jacket on it. So I thought, oh, okay, let me look at closer at this. This is the dust jacket, which I really like. Look at the detail, like little, little panels there. I, I thought it was really, really cool. And that, hence, that's, well, there's two reasons why the price of that is. The dust jacket for 1923 is more or less complete. It's a bit rough, but the designer of it, who who wrote, who who drew those, uh, who's the artist, is Evelyn Waugh. Yes, Evelyn Waugh, the author, *Brideshead Revisited*, and so forth. And when he was at Oxford, he considered himself an artist, and he wanted to do that kind of thing, and he designed. Apparently, according to this, I didn't know, uh, and I have read a biography of him before, but I forgot. It was either not mentioned, but I'm sure it was, but I completely forgot that he that he did this kind of thing. So I think that's why, and I thought that was kind of interesting, because it goes back to what I was saying before, that you know, late 19th century and early 20th century, all these art writers and artists, uh, we're all in bed together, uh, sometimes literally, but mostly figuratively. Um, and, you know, there, there's there's all these connections, which would be fascinating to unra unravel them and, and actually have a book that sort of, you know, meanders through all these connections. Um, but it would be a rabbit nightmare, that's for sure, rabbit hole nightmare. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting. And I've got a little, and now I've taken out my, uh, this is the second, uh, try at the, uh, um, at the, uh, at the video, but I have a little volume here from night. Well, it was originally 1924. It's called Kensington Garden or Kensington Gardens by Humbert Wolf. Uh, the, my printing is a second printing from 1927. And there's an interesting story where this came from. There was a charity, well, this part of the charity shop is still there. It was a Salvation Army charity shop. It was two floors. You go up the stairs, and it was a whole floor of books. And, you know, most of the books, you know, like, they're just, rat, like, you know, they'd have, like, you know, five or six shelves of ratty Daniel Steels that, you know, they could have just jettisoned those that, you know, like, of the six or seven years I'd gone in there, like, I don't think hardly any of them, were sold but they were getting tons of books in and near the near sort of the center of the room there was a two bookcases back to back that were about waist height uh but almost three feet wide three or four shelves and it was the poetry section and i used to raid it every every month and because it didn't seem like anybody else was buying this so i get little mostly little slim volumes like this and it was right up my alley because it was like late 19th century and early 20th century poets. And a lot of them, unlike this, were, you know, single publications by somebody, or at least I think they were. And, you know, they, and, and you can't find anything about, or at least at the time when I searched a little bit online, I couldn't find anything about the uh, poets. And we'll get to those eventually through this series, I hope to. Um, 
But yeah, and, and I think this came one time because they got a whole slew of poetry in. And, you know, they, they I think they had they had a sale of like, you know, 10p to 50p. So that's where I got this. And I think I bought like 50 books, uh, you know, in one go at, you know, 10p and 50p each. So, you know, I, you know, I, I basically uh, spent, you know, uh, what would cost me for maybe two small lunches somewhere. Uh, you know, so I was really happy for that and I've still got, I uh, got them all on the shelf and I've perused them. But anyway, that's where this came from. And I'll read a couple things. I kind of like, um, um, the, the, some of these poems in here, like, like I've said before, these, these are not Shakespeare. And I use that as a comparison, meaning that they're not top shelf poets for the most part, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're still you know, can't be fun and interesting and have some interesting meanings like uh, a few that I'll read here. This one's called, and, and the thing is, it's this is Kensington Garden, so it's, it's poems, everything to do with Kensington Garden. Uh, this was called Two Sparrows. Two sparrows feeding, heard a thrush sing at to the dawn. The first said, tush. In all my life, I never heard a more affected singing bird. The second said, it's you and me who slave to keep the likes of he. And if we cared, both sparrows said, we do the singing on our head. The thrush plucked sideways and was dumb. And now, they screamed, he's pinched our crumb. And then there's another one on the opposite page called Thrushes. The city financier walks in the garden stiffly because of his pride and his burdens. The daisies looking up observe only a self-respecting curve. The thrushes only see a flat tableland of shiny hat. He looks importantly about him while all of the spring goes on without him. And now I'll have to find my... Uh... And yeah, it's just it, that section has just... It, it's about birds... Um, there's one here about Peter Pan. Oh, the old gardener is pretty good. Uh, in the gar in the sorry in the Italian garden, tulips iris wait for the old bent gardener to open the heavy gate. Down the flagged steps he daughters and fills his watering can, making the water lily sway and clums the clumsy old man. When he was young, the gardener had sterner tasks than this. Now he waters at morning tulips and irises. And it just goes on. There's all sorts of stuff uh, in here. Uh, let's see here. Um, the soldiers. The soldiers camped in the gardens and tore the grass to shreds. They swore great oaths and laughed like lumps and scratched their heavy heads, dimly aware of something wrong, but what they could not guess, because, of course, it was themselves, their horses, and their mess. And then the opposite one here is the tramps. The tramps slink in at half past four in the sweet summer weather and stretch upon the grass and snore peaceably all together. They look like litter on the grass and not like sleeping men that life the fester dropped as his and has not tidied up again. Yeah, and it, just just fun little uh, bits of poetry. But yeah, it's it's interesting, like uh, the rabbit holes that you can go down. Um, it was just you know, I, I was flabbergasted that, first of all, Circular Saws coming up as a title. And then, you know, Evelyn Waugh, the, you know, designed the uh, the book jacket. Be cool to have, but not, not 660 pounds cool, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, that's it for this week's Forgotten Poets. Uh, if you've heard of Humbert uh, Wolf, then... Yeah, sound out in the comments, or if you know any, well, especially if you know anything more about him that I, I haven't said. 
Uh, no, I don't expect anybody to to spend you know time searching for it. I'm sure there's more information online, but I just never. I just did a quick, quick cursory um, glance at it, and I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll leave a link to the uh, poem of the week uh, Guardian article down below in the uh, description as well. And we'll see you next time, BookTube. Thank you.